For this video, I'm going to show you how to use the sign, sum, and difference identities to find the exact value. I have written out both the sum and difference identities for sine. Sine of the sum of two angles is equal to sine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle plus cosine of the first times sine of the second. The difference identity says that the sine of the difference of two angle, angles is equal to sine of the first times cosine of the second minus cosine of the first times sine of the second. So we are going to use both of these properties to help us find exact values of given angles. So the first one that we're going to find is sine of 105 degrees. So if I look at my unit circle, and the reason that we're using the unit circle is because I can rewrite this angle as the sum of two angles on the unit circle. And I can use the coordinates using the fact that all of the coordinate points are cosine, comma, sine. Okay, so remember like the cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2, the sine of 30 is 1 half. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to figure out what two angles on here, and there could be more than one combination that would work, that add up to 105 or have a difference of 105. So for this one, we can see that 60 degrees plus 45 degrees is equal to 105. So I could rewrite this as the sine of 60 plus 45 degrees. So all I did was I rewrote 105 in an alternative form. Okay. Once I write it as a sum, now I can use the sum rule and I can say that sine of 60 times the cosine of 45 degrees plus cosine of 60 times sine of 45 degrees. Okay, so now what we do is we go to our unit circle and we look at the two points and we find our angle measures. Okay, so the sine of 60, we would look at the 60 degrees and we would look at the second one, is the square root of 3 over 2 times the cosine of 45 degrees. So the cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. And then we're going to add to that the cosine of 60. So now we're going to look back at the 60. Cosine is 1 half times the sine of 45, which is square root of 2 over 2. So when I simplify this, um, remember that anything under the radical can be multiplied together. So that would give me the square root of 6. Both of these, when I multiply 2 times 2 and 2 times 2, are going to give me a denominator of 4. So I'm just going to write these all over 4. Over here, when I simplify 1 times square root of 2, is just going to give me the square root of 2. And this would be my final answer. This is an exact value because the square root of 6 and the square root of 2 are both irrational, so there is no exact value for those. All right, so let's move into the second one. The second one is given to us in forms of rate or in terms of radians. So what I want to do is I want to find two fractions that add together to give me negative pi over 12 that also happen to, in reduced form, be on the unit circle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite negative pi over 12 as 2 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. Okay, because 2 minus 3 gives me negative 1. Okay, and I'm going to write these in their reduced form. Okay, 2 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 6. 3 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 4. Okay, so then we can see on the unit circle that both of those do show up. Okay, so we can see that pi over 6 is right here. And negative pi over 4 means that we're going in the opposite direction pi over 4, which would put me down. Sorry, I don't even have to use that. I'm not thinking of it in terms, I don't know why I just did that. I'm just going to use the pi over 4 um, once I've rewritten it back out. Okay, so because it's a difference of the two, let's first write it in the format that we need to. Sine a, my a term is pi over 6. So I'm going to use sine pi over 6 times cosine 
of my second angle, which is pi over 4. Because it's subtraction, it's the difference, I put the difference in between. And then I would use sine pi over 6, I mean pi over 4. And I do this all the time. To me, it's more intuitive to write sine, cosine, sine, cosine, and switch the angles. But most of the textbooks that I see use sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And for whatever reason, my brain wants to switch the sine and the cosine. So I apologize for that. Let me write it the way I have written up here. So I would say that cosine pi over 6 times sine of pi over 4. And I would get the same thing if I would have written sine pi over 4 first and cosine pi over 6. I'm just trying to stay consistent with what I had written down for the rule, even though my brain always wants to switch that one for some reason. Okay, so now if we simplify sine pi over 6, if we look for this one, sine pi over 6 is going to be the 1 half. Cosine pi over 4 is going to be square root 2 over 2. And then we're going to subtract from that the cosine of pi over 6. So the cosine of pi over 6 is square root 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 4 ends up being square root 2 over 2. So remember that I'm just looking at cosine comma sine, and I'm just plugging those values in. Okay. So now all we have to do is simplify this. For the first part, we would get square root of 2 over 4. And I'm just going to write the whole thing over 4 because, again, this denominator and this denominator both are 4. Okay, And then I would have minus square root of 6. And this would be the exact value for sine of negative pi over 12. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well. And if you get a chance, please consider subscribing.